Hey neighbor, you made it. I was just about to start the video. But first, three things. One, I am happy that you are here. Two, my professional expertise is in education. The things you're about to see, I have no expertise in automotive repair or engineering. And so what I do should not be construed as advice, but instead an expression of learning. Three, if you share this video with your friends and family, that, that expression of learning can go further and wider and hopefully inspire more people to do and fix and repair and build more. Let's see what's going on in the workshop. 2002 Isuzu Trooper. I have taken apart the center console that surrounds the gear shifter. And we're going to talk about why this car uh, doesn't seem to get out of neutral or otherwise does not seem to do anything right in terms of shifting gears and being able to discuss that is going to require some deep discussions about the way cars work and specifically the way transmissions work so if you were to take apart the center console around your gear shifter if you have a traditional gear shifter like this um, that you that you mechanically actuate to make something happen then this is probably kind of what it looks like on the inside Okay, first things first, when I press the button uh, that allows me to move the gear shifter, you're gonna see that blue cam actuate, right? This is a mechanical linkage where this button is attached to a diagonal piece of plastic and that diagonal piece of plastic pushes up another diagonal piece of plastic and that moving up motion that happens here through the shaft is pulling up that blue chunk or down in this case and it's causing that blue pin to go down and that's causing the blue cam to rotate why is that necessary that's necessary because we need to be able to uh, begin and halt operation of the gear shifter we don't want this thing to be shifting uh, while we're driving that would be bad um, and so this is just the first action of getting the car ready to shift gears. Uh, as you can see when I press the button, not only does the cam move, but also the cam pulls on this cable right here. And this cable is attached to uh, the transmission. And that's what we're gonna talk about here in a second. All right, here we are. Now we're in the driver's side. I'm gonna turn the key. The key has a number of different settings. It has off, or I'm sorry, it has locked, it has off, it has accessories, it has on, and it has start. Remember we talked about this, oops. Remember we talked about this in the starter video. So I'm gonna set this to accessory. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because something, that this is where the operation kind of breaks down. I should not be able to move the gear shifter while in accessories mode. That doesn't make any sense. That would be unsafe. Right, so whenever the car is in accessories, I am currently able to move the gear shifter through the settings, which I don't think is, should, be, should be allowed, <laughs> right? And it's even more of a problem because I didn't even press the brake, right? If I'm turning the car on to accessories mode and I'm not even pressing the brake, I should not be able to move the gear shifter. That, that's a problem. That's the problem we're gonna have to fix. Because what's happening is that when the car is on, when the engine's on, because remember we got the engine to start last time, whenever the engine's on, I can't select any gears. It seems to be simply be stuck into neutral. It doesn't work because we have to be able to reverse and drive as well to be able to drive the car. Last time I tried to put the car in gear, it backed up into the van, right? Because this driveway, I guess, is on a relatively pretty, I guess is on an incline at least a little bit. And so in order to move this off of here, we're going to need to be able to put the car in drive and we're gonna to have to be able to get some torque so we can move the car forward, right? But without being able to shift gears, without being able to send a signal to the transmission control module, which is what we're doing with the gear shifter, we're not gonna be able to go anywhere. And so right now we're not going anywhere. Okay, so we're here at the front of the car again. I wanted to show you the transmission fluid because the transmission fluid is involved in a complex hydraulic system that is actuating the solenoids in the transmission to make the car go at different speeds whenever it needs to go at different speeds. Okay, so just as a experiential learning 
experience, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go about the process of changing the transmission fluid because I've never done it before and because it's not going to hurt anything and it's also just a good practice because if we take a look at the transmission fluid, which is right here, um, it, it, it shouldn't be that color. It should be kind of vaguely clear and pinkish and, and, and reddish. It should not be black, <laughs> which is, uh, is bad. Um, and so this could, this, could, this could be causing a much deeper issue, which I suspect is the case, um, considering all that grit on the inside of the cap. Anyway, all, all that being said is we're still going to diagnose the electrical system, but I wanted to know I wanted to I wanted you to know that that's going to happen as well. But let's actually check these little bits and see if that's actually some kind of metal shavings or something else. Um, let's see. I've got a stick here that should do something. Oh yeah, those are that's uh, that's uh, that's metal dust, isn't it? That's not good. Friends, before we get too far into this, I want to explain exactly what the transmission does and how it works. The transmission, automatic transmission on a car is one of, is a very complex piece of machinery. And it has many different moving parts and many different elements that are very important. Uh, so, in order not to, not to overload us with knowledge, <laughs> um, I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to see when we take the transmission pan off and when we look inside, what, what what will we be looking at, and what do those things do? That's what that. Uh, this drawing that I've made here is going to help uh, aid in our understanding because as we learn more about the transmission, as we begin to take it apart, we'll add to our drawing. I've added just the main, just just the cr most crucial pieces that we're going to need to be able to. Uh, move forward with our repair. We have the main case pan, which is at the very bottom of the transmission. It's going to be the first, it's going to be the main thing that we're working on. Inside this pan is where transmission fluid pools. Okay, there are two screws for draining that liquid, as well as gaskets, or they kind of look like washers, but the, the manual says they are gaskets. A gasket's job is to help seal a connection so that fluid does not leak out that's all it is for that's all it's there for and then we have the pan screw and the pan screws go all the way are as far as i remember they're all the way around this lip uh, and that's what keeps that together there are a bunch of these but i've only drawn it once because it would be tedious but that's all we need to know right now in order to move forward with our repair so what does the transmission do? Uh, whenever we start a motor, we understand that it spins, and we understand that it spins at a certain number of revolutions per minute, at a certain RPM. Well, the engine does too. The engine is a kind of motor, it's just not electrically actuated, it's actuated via internal combustion, via very small explosions that are caused by gasoline being ignited, and, and, and that is causing the engine to spin. We understand that that the the engine the engine spins at at a rate that is commensurate with the amount of fuel that's getting in the amount of air that's getting in and some other factors but we need a much wider range of speeds available to us the minimum and the maximum speed the engine can run at are not the same as the minimum maximum speed that we need to be able to go on the highway or on the back streets or in the alleyway right we need very very low speeds and we also need high speeds but the engine doesn't do that that way, right? There's only so much we can do to control the torque caused by those small explosions, by the, by the internal combustion. The transmission's job is to translate, transmit, transmission, is to transmit the speed that is produced by the engine and convert it into lower speeds that we can use to drive at in the alleyway or at 15 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, 5 miles per hour. The transmission takes the rotation caused by the internal combustion of the engine and reduces it down to a low speed that we can use in low speed situations as well as translating it to high speeds that we can use for high speed applications. There's not much the engine can do to control the speed that it's rotating, right? The things it can do involve air intake and fuel intake and that's about it. We need the transmission to be able to go at speeds beyond the capabilities of the engine on its own. Great. The transmission fluid helps to lubricate 
the mechanisms, the gears that are inside the transmission that allow that to happen. And so we need clean and fresh transmission fluid to be able to help lubricate those gears. Um, the next thing we're going to see after we take off the after we take off the bottom pan is we're going to see there's a going to be, going to be a gasket in there, a larger gasket that makes sure that fluid does not leak out of the transmission pan. And this is the chip collector magnet. It's going to collect little bits of metal so that they do not recirculate into the engine. So they do not recirculate into the transmission. So for this part of our story, this is where things are going to end up. We're going to take off the pan. We're going to remove the gasket. And inside, after that, we're going to see the transmission, the, the filter, the transmission oil filter. And a series of screws that connect the filter to the rest of the transmission, and so that's where that's where our that's where our disassembly will will end up right at this at this juncture. All right, so I managed to find a tray here. This tray can hold about 10 gallons of fluid, and there's only going to be I mean even at most there would be like three or four gallons maybe of transmission fluid. Okay, I have I have lifted the car and I have placed our pan underneath the transmission fluid pan, which is right there. And uh, I'm gonna have to get under there and figure out what kind of bolts there are, but let's do that. Maybe our old friend, the 10 millimeter. Yep, that's it, 10 millimeters. You know what, I'm gonna hold you because Here we are under here together. Um, I'm going to start at the corner, or I'm going to start. Yeah, I'm going to start at the corner because I think that uh, transmission fluid is going to leak out, and we want to get to go into the bucket, which is on the top of your screen now because you're upside down. So let's get in here. Okay. No, uh, no spillage yet. Let's hit the corner up here. I mean, you need to start getting an earlier start as I keep running out of sun. Howdy, friends and neighbors, back up, back out here on the ground. Back out here on the ground. Got to take this bracket off because it's in the way. I'm using this PVC pipe as a cheater bar to get more leverage. I need more leverage because these are really in there. And for good reason. This is a <laughs> this is a structural piece of the car. I'm trying to overcome the force of static friction that is keeping the bolt and the thread together as uh, as one. <sighs> Alrighty, I don't know if you can see that, but we finally have access to the rest of the transmission pan screws. This bracket also contains bracketry that I guess is for routing some kind of wire for something, maybe, maybe transmission fluid, maybe not, but this thing is capital G grimy. I mean this thing, this thing is grimy as it gets. So that tells me that this may not have any transmission fluid in it because it may have all leaked out and that's why it's grimy, but we'll see. Well, I didn't consider this. That's 
the way we want to play. Okay, unfortunately, while you guys were charging, I had to go take a phone call. The pan fell. As you can see, we still got some drippage going on. Um, but, let's get in here and take a look. Uh, here's our transmission pan. Pan looks good. Gasket is basically gone. There's the filter. That hole right there, I guess. And might be the magnet. I'm not sure. Once we get all this cleaned up, let me get a rag. We'll get in here and wipe this up. Okay. Yes, that orange thing is the transmission filter. Let's get a good look at that. So maybe that can help tell us something. Yep. Some electrical doodads. Oops. So what really needs to happen right now, first of all, that ain't supposed to be that color. It's supposed to be red, first of all. Second of all, we're gonna see if we can't get this into a smaller container, clean that pan, and then see if uh, we can get it back up there so that way it won't drip anymore. And then we'll add some more fluid. She's looking okay, however, quite some thick metal deposits in here from wear, which is normal, but that seems like a lot. But the gasket seems okay. that dry out the sun all right there's our pan drying in the sun pretty clean here's our water that we use cannot dispose of that normally got to figure out what to do with it, that probably filter that and then our transmission fluid that's no good here were a second ago when I said that gasket looked okay I was lying that uh I had, when I say I had to scrape that thing off, it did not have anything left. So we're going to have to replace that. The question is, how clean do I want this? Part of me says very. You know, I will tell you, I do get kind of tired of being an oh, what's good enough kind of person. I would like to do something that I consider perfect at some point in my life. Is that now? I don't know. I think it's more of a matter of mindset. I think we'll get there eventually naturally. It's just not something you can force. Just don't I just don't want any major gasket bits and pieces. That 
is a clean transmission pan. This is the rest of my crude filter that I built. Here's the cheesecloth layer, the cloth layer, and then a coffee filter layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter this transmission fluid in progressively smaller screens. Hopefully we'll learn something about it. Oh, perfect. There we go. Part of me wants to kind of scoop it a little bit, so this, let me find a little cup. Hey, that's working pretty good. goal, like in everything we do around here, is to learn about stuff. And it's still kind of dripping out of the car over there, but not enough to, not enough to worry. We'll go put it back. Okay. Cloth layer. <laughs> Slowly but surely. I won't make you watch it, this whole thing. Okay, dribbled a little bit on the concrete, but that's okay, well, that'll, that'll buff out. Um, second round. Second round of filtering going well. I think there was a bug somehow got in here in the second round, but that's okay. Um, nothing left to do now, but the uh, coffee filter. Got about an hour left of good sun. Uh, that, well, actually about more like 10 minutes of sun because the sun's about to go behind that fence over there. And then we got about maybe 20 minutes after that of uh, any light at all. Definitely see some contaminants in here. Something we'll take a look at after we get done. Oops. Lastly, our coffee filter layer. I don't know how this is gonna go because it's barely holding on, but. No guts, no glory. I may sit on the floor. This cinder block is not a seat. It's not good for the hams. Probably gonna take it sweet time. I won't I won't force you to sit through watch that. Okay. Nearly nearly made it with the sun still up. It's been about nearly an hour of me doing this. It's filtering. I'm gonna finish this and then we're probably gonna take a look, put this in a glass container, take it inside clean up because we do not want to have oily rags around it's a recipe for fire um, so I'm gonna clean I'm gonna clean up everything before the Sun goes down and clean up my bins kind of see what goes see what happens so sit tight I'm gonna give you a second to uh, get your bearings here <laughs> because I'm here and I barely know what I'm looking at. Here's a, there's the steering wheel, here's the front seat. I'm in the passenger seat. And I'm gonna take the screws out of this um, mode selector lever, otherwise known as gear shifter. There we go, 
now, now we're talking. It is nighttime, but I was in there editing the previous clips that you just saw, only to have a very serious realization that this is what I want to be doing. So I'm doing it. And so here we are. So this must be, that must be, boy I wish I could see, that would be great. The battery, the battery on this car is totally unplugged, there is no power anywhere in here. Well, that goes over there, that's stuck. That doesn't seem like a connector. Okay, campers, let's see if we can't figure out what's going on in here. First of all, this thing is filthy. Everything in here is filthy. This whole this whole assembly right here is full of crust and gunk. And I'm not entirely unconvinced that that's no, that's why it's not working. Look, no wonder it can't no wonder it can't shift into second or third. No wonder it can't shift into other gears. The gears are packed with goo. The gear selector is full of gunk. Right, there's our action again. Interesting. So much crud down there. Um, okay. It's worth noting that doing all that mess with the gear shifter is causing the transmission to flush more, which is good because we have a container under there. It's just like I can smell the transmission fluid, and so I was like, that's not, that's not, that's probably not good. Um, I'm having some trouble with these screws. <sighs> My suspicion, for whatever reason, this is not stopping when it should stop. Okay, so it's so that would be a that would be a that would be best case scenario. Best case scenario, the reason this transmission is not transmitting. Best case scenario for why the transmission is not allowing us to shift is because this is slipping over what it's supposed to be doing. This is not catching in these grooves where it should be. Now that would be best case scenario because that's a mechanical problem and that's a relatively straightforward fix and that involves taking this off and cleaning it and making sure that everything stays where it's supposed to go. Maybe deepening these grooves some if we can. Um, but there's a, there's also a distinct possibility that that is not it. And so I don't want to destroy these screws trying to get these out of here. Although, it needs to be cleaned because it's just so gunky. I managed to get one out while you had your eyes closed. Just needs a slightly fatter screwdriver. Okay, let's take a look here. This thing is grody. This thing is caked full of hair and grime and stuff. So let's clean this up. Well, campers, there's uh, there's good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is, I don't think that was the issue. The bad news is, I think this whole plate's gonna have to come off because The actual controlling of this action is part of this mechanism, which is down here, that sort of goldy mechanism down there. The detents that are supposed to be matching these detents. I can hear something happening. But we'll know more once we take this plate off. 
All right, it's the next day. I don't have a ton of time to work on this uh, particular project today, uh, but we did. I did make some progress in getting this off. It was just kind of stuck. And as you can see, there's outside. So, making progress. That that bulge right there, that, that black piece of plastic or whatever right there, that's, that's, that's gonna be what we need to get into next, which means this whole thing probably has to come off, which uh, it looks like it should be able to, so. Let's see what we can do uh, do next. Okay, here's the here's the transmission pan. There's the transmission filter. I decided to spend a little bit of time scraping the rest of the gasket off of the top side of the um, transmission pans. So that's what I'm gonna do. While I'm under here, I might go ahead and take off the transmission filter, but we'll see see where we get. Anyway, I guess we'll just leave that. Tool of choice, a half inch socket. Got my catch bucket, because I think this thing will, could be leaky. Because there's still a lot of transmission fluid here in the transmission. I got a new transmission filter coming on Monday, today being uh, Friday. I have confirmed while I was down here, I have confirmed while I was down here that the transmission linkage functions, meaning, meaning the way the way that you select the mode while you're driving, the park, reverse, neutral, drive, L, the Prindle, whatever you want to call it, the way that that communicates to the car is currently functioning properly. I dropped my socket into the uh, transmission fluid, which, you know, that's good. Did it again. That's uh, yeah, that's that's real. That's real. That's what you want. You know, people who work on cars get a bad rap for being greasy or dirty, but um, you know, that's that's part of it. Oh, oh, there's some goo. Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. There's the transmission filter. Here's our transmission fluid in our transmission bucket. I got a new one on the way. And uh, let's just get in here and take a look at this while we're here. Boy, that is, uh, that's black, isn't it? Just, uh, let's leave that in there. All right, just a very quick summary of how the transmission shifter uh, works. So you have your Prindle here, Park Reverse Neutral Drive L, one, two, three, whatever. Sometimes more options. Um, but this is where you select the mode you want to be in. That gear, there's a gear attached to that, and that gear causes this linkage to rotate, and that rotation causes this rod to move back and forth and the back and forth movement of that rod causes this linkage to rotate and the rotation of this end of the linkage causes some electrical contacts to close and that's what sends the signal to the transmission solenoids to fire or not. Cool? Now what I have determined is that this works and I'm about to put a clip right here. I'm going to put a clip right in here of it working. Okay, okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, any more? No, that's good, thank you. Right, saw that? Okay. So, I'm pretty confident that changing the transmission fluid is really all that's really required because there's a lot of different things that are happening. For one, the transmission is getting a lot of heat because it does not have appropriate lubrication. So it's gaining a lot, of, it's, it's got a lot of heat and that's causing the 
the, that's causing the fluid to degrade and that's causing it to lose lubrication faster and faster. There's a lot of things that can be fixed by changing the transmission fluid and I'll show you something else. Uh, this is a transmission fluid thickener basically. Um, it is A going to help the transmission fluid be a little bit thicker and that's going to help stop it from leaking leakage is one of the reasons I think that we're so low on fluid in the first place. Um, two, it's going to help thicken the transmission fluid so that the gear enmeshment can be a little bit more can have a little bit more alacrity. They can they can they can they can enmesh better and more uh, reliably and more times <laughs> without breaking down. Because the thickened transmission fluid is bringing lubrication to the gears, we should cut down on some amount of heat. But there is a heat issue with the engine, but that's uh, that's another show. All right, here's our used transmission filter, made in Germany. That's nice. Oh, those aren't those aren't contaminants. That's the filter material. That ain't got nothing left in it. So you kind of saw while we were under there how this is oriented. This hole right here, it, this hole right here is the same place where the level of fluid inside the transmission pan would sit. And so that creates suction and that allows the transmission pump to pull the fluid through the filter and back out through, and back out through that hole. And that's where the transmission uh, fluid goes up into the rest of the transmission. Cool? Cool. Nextly, if we take a look at our used transmission fluid, we can see, and uh, we can tell by our filtering, that there was no large metal contaminants in it. It was not, it was not, um, it's not full of metal contaminants. In fact, it's just overheated, it's burned up, it's used up, it's been in there for a long time. And that's good news because it's possible that changing the fluid will simply fix what our problem uh, has been. And if you recall, if you recall, our problem is lack of gears. <laughs> like, you know, could be a problem. Uh, our transmission pan looks good. All the gaskets off, a little bit of light sanding to remove the rest of the gasket. Do not do any heavy sanding. Heavy sanding could cause gaps and uh, the reason that this may have not a lot of transmission fluid in it is because this may be uh, this may have a gap in it somewhere or someplace that fluid's escaping, and so any sort of deeper sanding or surfacing could cause some problems. So we'll sort of address that when we get in there. There are some areas in here that do appear like they may need to be tightened more when we put the screws back in, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Here's our transmission fluid of choice. Walmart. <laughs> uh, uh, the instructions say to use Dexron 3, but that is not a standard that is used anymore as far as I know. And so that's why it says here on the instructions for use in vehicles previously serviceable by Dexron 3. Now, if you recall, one of the reasons that this is problematic is because we're able to shift gears without the brake being engaged. Now, there's a number of different systems involved that may be the answer to that problem about why we're having a problem with that. And it could have to do with this, right? So when we were looking at this the last time, there's a, there's a small solenoid that shoots out a protective uh, piece of plastic that prevents you from being able to change the, uh, being able to prevent you from change the uh, setting. And it's possible that that is malfunctioning or it was just clogged with dirt and debris, which I cleared out. And so, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, the other thing that's happened, the other thing that may be happening is a neutral safety switch. All right, here we are back underneath the car. Here's the transmission input. This is where the filter goes. This right here is the neutral safety switch. The neutral safety switch is basically sending a signal through the brake pedal that says, hey, brake pedal is pressed, or hey, brake pedal is not pressed. And that allows you to then send additional signals through this wire. As you can see here, there's a heat shield that's on the neutral safety switch. And that heat shield has a lot of gunk built up on it, and whether that's from burning or scorching or uh, fluid leak. 
we need to repair that. Um, and then the last thing worth cons that is somewhat concerning is that there's a piece of plastic missing from here. And that piece of plastic is protecting the electrical wires that are going through the rest of the car and they're right here next to the catalytic converter and which may be in the process of overheating we haven't really decided yet but that's another show and so our 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 transmission issue sort of begins and ends here at the neutral safety switch at least for these purposes because we don't see any massive metal chunks in the transmission fluid that tells us that the general persuasion of the transmission is still working as it probably should now we could be wrong and that could be a mistake to assume that but from the learning that we have at our disposal right now and what i've learned so far and what we're doing that's kind of where this video is going to going to end in terms of the new learning involved now as you can see there's still little bits of gasket left over here i got to get in here and scrape that up to match the mating surface of the uh, other part of the pan we're going to put that back on once we receive the gasket and once we input a new filter which is still sort of on the way you can see there's the input where that hole would attach to the transmission filter and would allow uh, transmission fluid to be drawn up into the rest of the transmission you can kind of see it's moving through the neutral safety switch which is how the neutral safety switch is able to make contact electrically and send signals through its wires all right let's take a look see here here's our old filter here's our new one yep new gasket so let's get this let's get this all sort of set up okay let's take a look we need to do is we need to clean these bolts this is parts cleaner which just so happens that we have parts we need to clean Luckily for us though, the gap hole, the screw holes in this gasket are a little tight, which means we can kind of line everything up before we go to place, which is exceeding, exceedingly helpful. It's cold in here, my hands are freezing. All I'm going to do now is go around and put in the rest of the transmission pan screws and then we'll go from there. Alrighty, our transmission pan screws are all back in place where they belong. I went ahead and torqued everything down uh, equally to the best of my ability. I don't have a torque wrench but that's okay. Hopefully things will be okay. Once we start running it and we start running some new transmission fluid which we haven't put in yet by the way um, if we see any drips or leaks or anything like that hopefully we'll be able to uh, identify if anything is out of whack next point of order we need to open up that that screw right there the overfill screw and we're going to put our little pump in to be able to pump transmission fluid into the case and while it's running and we're going to need to let the car down so the level in here is uh, so it levels out so that we know that the fluid level is level um, and at the same time we're going to I'm going to spray this bracket down with the with the brake cleaner hopefully break up some of this gunk and then once it's clean 
if there is any leaks, which I suspect there are leaks, I don't know if it's in the transmission pan or something else, but if there's leaks involved, then we'll be able to, I, once things are clean, we'll be able to then subsequently identify uh, where those leaks are happening because everything will be clean and we'll be able to compare and contrast. So, whoops. In order to pump the transmission fluid up into that overfill screw, I have here a fluid pump from Slippery Feet. And this is going to go right, yep, there we go. There's your transmission fluid. There's good transmission fluid. See how red it is? There we go. There's our fluid. I'm, I'm going to leave this open a little bit because we're going to put in some of that uh, fuel thickener or uh, oil thickener, remember? Um, okay, so let's, so we know that that works. That's great. Awesome. First thing I need to do is take out the filler cap, which I'm going to do with the car lifted because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it again. Next thing to do, I'm going to add my oil thickener to this bottle. See if I can get all of it in here. I assume so. All right. The goal now is to see. I can get this in there. I got none battery. I have no battery whatsoever, so I'm going to let this charge for probably overnight out here in the fresh air. And in the fresh air underneath the car. I, there's, no, there's no rain in the forecast, so but I'll keep an eye out. I'll probably come bring it in before I go to bed. Just unplug everything, go to bed, check it, all that kind of good stuff. But it's nighttime. And uh, I'm, I'm out of moves right now. What I should have done, and what, what the manual says to do, but I just kind of forgot, was to bring the engine up to idle before you pump the fluid in. However, I didn't do that, and so I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna turn it on when I can. I'm gonna turn the car on when I can, let it idle, bring it up to temperature, and uh, hopefully then we'll see if we have enough or not enough. In the meantime, my homemade apparatus was not accomplishing what it should have been accomplishing. Instead, it was it was just not getting in there enough. What I need is like a, 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 I was specifically trying to avoid having to execute this kind of maneuver. But what I've done here is I had some polyvinyl tubing. When I built this table, this table is built out of these tubes. Right, and I've got this, it's dark out, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. Um, and what I've done is I've taken a very small hose clamp that I just happened to have in supply, which is great, I didn't have to go buy any hose clamps, but I managed to connect the transmission fluid inlet into this long tube, which will allow us to pump underneath the car and into the transmission pan in a much, in a, it, it, in a way that allows us to see what's going on a lot easier, right? My theory is is that the the little black um, tip that it came with, it just was it, it was it was too wide. It was too it was too much girth, right? And what that meant is is as we were trying to push transmission fluid into the into the pan, it was just pooling up around the. Inlet, the overfill, and just coming back out, and so it looked like it was full. But I don't think it's full because 
that pan is about the size of this, and this is going to allow us to verify, in fact, that it's full. And I'm going to leave this here in a little container, and we're going to make sure that this is not uh, leaking because, you know, hose clamps are for this. This is what they're for. They're for clamping hoses, like this. Um, and I believe I've got it as tight as I can, and it's working. So when we come back out to check the battery here in a few hours, we'll check this as well. Yes, I've spilled a bunch of transverse fluid all over the place. It's like murder she wrote around here. Like, But even though I was specifically trying to avoid doing something like this, I'm glad I did because I think this is going to work. Okay, it's a few hours later. Um, we got about a drop or two of drippage, so I went ahead and put another hose clamp on it just in case. It will pump all the way through. It takes a lot of force, but it will do it. It will pump all the way through as put it back in the bottle. Meanwhile, this is still cooking. Okay, this time, for real. Hmm. See what happens. I'm going to turn it on one more time just to see if we have any gears. Well, shoot. She's running, but she's running rough and she, it still ain't got no gears. I still can't go anywhere. Well, neighbors, we 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 couldn't we couldn't get the job done today, but there's going to be a part two at some point. We're going to take up take apart the neutral safety switch to see what's going on, uh, and then look at the transmission pump, and then see kind of what the next choices are. Um, I'm not sure what to do right now, so I'm going to do some research, and I'll get back to you. I really appreciate you watching this video, and if you uh, do all the press all the buttons, it'll be good. All right, let's regroup momentarily. There's a couple things we need to do. One, there's very little oil in the engine. Let's change that. Two, there's very little coolant in the radiator. Well, in the reservoir. Let's check that. Three, at the very beginning of this video, I showed you the uh, transmission fluid reservoir in the engine bay. It was on the right side, and it's got the same kind of gunky black transmission fluid that we took out. A couple of things. One, while we were running the car, while I had it in reverse, the transmission pump should have been doing something. It should have displaced some of that fluid somehow, some of the fluid that we put into it. And it didn't, as far as I can tell. As far as I can tell, nothing was happening. And that's troubling, because one of two things could possibly be true, among, among other things. One, the electrical system is not sending the signals where it needs to go. Two, the hydraulic system is plugged. There's some sort of blockage happening or some sort of leak that is causing transmission fluid not to be moved through the system. The repair manual suggests doing a pressure test. Naturally, that's where the uh, blind tester goes. This is a pressure tester. It's got lots of different fittings and stuff. Hopefully we'll be able to figure out what's going on with this and we'll, we'll see what's going on. 
the pressure in the hydraulic hoses that control the ins and outs of the transmission should have different, we should be able to measure different pressures when we have different controls activated to determine systematically which parts aren't going. And then the last thing that we need to do is we're going to need to get a scanner tool, a diagnostic scanning tool called an onboard diagnostic scanning, the, the thing that they do, you know, be able to read the trouble codes that are in the car's computer because if the car's computer is not functioning then none of the electrical systems will function. Which is sort of the, which is sort of a problem. Now, there is the possibility that the neutral safety switch is still not activating um, and in that way the transmission control module, the computer that's controlling when the transmission does transmission stuff is not being told that it's safe to do so. And that's gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna mean we're gonna need to check that circuit. Check. That means we're gonna have to check those circuits very carefully and figure out making sure electricity is going to where it's supposed to be going so that things can go when they need to go. Okay, but let's be real. Um, I need to do all those things, but I don't have the cash to buy the supplies I need to do those things except for the line pressure test, and I think it would be beneficial if that was its own video. So for now, we're going to end the video, and we'll pick, pick this back up whenever we get some more stuff. Please do me a favor, press the buttons. If you press the buttons, more people will see it, and more people see it, maybe they'll want to do and make and fix and all sorts of good stuff. Be back soon.